And we're going to talk about different types of seers or different seer anointings. See, I have a saying, I don't know when I coined the saying, but it's, you can't put a prophet in a box. See, there are many different kinds of prophetic expressions. So at the baseline, a seer is one who sees, right? A chose prophet, a, a seer is one who sees. The predominant expression of their gifting is to see in the spirit. That doesn't mean they don't hear, but the predominant way they receive revelation is visual rather than auditory. And so, but even within that realm of, of seers, there's no two seers that are exactly alike. Of course, uh, there's different camps, different groups that have great similarities, but God made us all unique. And so the way we express ourselves sometimes is unique. Our, you know, our anointing can be unique. Uh, you know, Benny Hinn's anointing is unique, right? He's not a seer, but Benny Hinn's anointing is unique. It's different than Joyce Meyer's anointing, right? It's different than Catherine Kuhlman's anointing, right? It's different than who? Kitty Jake's anointing. And so there's, there's different people carry different anointings. You can look at the 12 disciples and you can see that they had different anointings, uh, different expressions. So no two seers are alike, but you can get uh, an insight into their anointing through their God-given name and how they operated in the spirit. Okay, here's the thing about Jewish culture. They named their children purposefully. It wasn't like today how we get a baby name book and we choose to, you know, call our child Sky or Ocean or uh, something, you know, it's some kind of wild new kind of name. Um, they actually named their children very intentionally. When Abram was called Abram, it meant father. Abraham meant father to many nations. And so God called Abraham intentionally father of many nations because that's what he was going to become. So, uh, uh, like Job, J I'm sorry, uh, not Job, but uh, jo uh, Jabez, Jabez, his name mean one who caused pain. So all his life, he, that's what he heard. You're one who causes pain. You're one who causes pain. And uh, I don't know that he did or didn't, but he seemed to rise above his God-given name, which tried to form his destiny. So the names of uh, the Jewish culture, the way they named their children, it meant something to them perhaps more than it means something to us today. So you can get insight into the type of anointing the seers carried, talking about in the Bible by their God given name and how they operated in the spirit. Now, that won't be true of today. You can't determine anything about the late Bob Jones by the fact that his name was Bob Jones or John Paul Jackson. Their names aren't tied up to, but when you look at the Bible, things are more intentional. So now, although other prophets could see in the spirit, we know Jeremiah could see in the spirit. Uh, we know Isaiah had encounters. He saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. We know that there are many prophets in the Bible who had seeing encounters, Daniel. But there were nine prophets in the Bible uh, that were called by name seers. That, that they have a seer anointing. That They were the seers of the Bible. There are lots of prophets in the Bible. Not all of them were called seers. So we're going to go through these and I'm going to teach you some of the different types of seer anointings. And you'll begin to identify uh, with some of these one or two uh, as predominant flows in the way that you see. So let me pray first. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the spirit of God. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in the earth, raising up seers and seeing people. Help us, Lord, today to, to, to press into this teaching so we can understand better the anointing with which you have anointed us. Because the anointing comes from you. The anointing comes from your spirit. Spirit, oh God. So help us, Lord, to discern the type of anointing, the type of seer anointing that we carry so we can press into that which you've purposed for us, the functions that you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's start with what I think is probably the most obvious one. Probably the most obvious one is, can you guess? The Samuel anointing. The Samuel anointing. Now, Samuel was dedicated to the Lord from his mother's womb. Hannah actually promised before she even got pregnant with Samuel that if God gave her a baby, she would dedicate it back to him. 
and that she did. So, you know, even before he was born, he was already set apart, consecrated for the use of the Lord. And he was a seer prophet who anointed Israel's first two kings. Up until that time, there were judges. Samuel was the last judge. Then came who? Remember? Saul. Then came Saul. And so his name, listen to this, Samuel's name means name of God or heard of God. It means name of God or heard of God. So Samuel could not only, listen, Samuel could not only hear with great accuracy, he was heard of God. That means to be heard of God, that means you must be praying according to God's will. So it was like Samuel was like hardwired to walk in God's will. And part of the reason why I believe is because he was set apart. He was dedicated to the Lord before he was even born. That's a good lesson for those of you having children. Dedicate your baby to the Lord before they're even born. Don't wait till you have a little ceremony at church. All that's very nice and good. But do, but dedicate your baby to the Lord, even when you're trying to have a baby. Lord, we're going to dedicate this baby to you. Seriously, there's something to that, to being dedicated to the Lord before you're even born. That was Samuel. And he lived an extraordinary life. Now, he prayed according to the, to the will of the Lord. First John 5. First John 5, 14 through 15. And this, this is the amplified version of the Bible. And this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness, which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. Remember, Samuel's name means God hears, right? And since verse 15, and since we, and since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled absolute knowledge that we have granted us as our present possessions, the request made of him. So Samuel walked in a confidence. He knew the Lord and he knew the Lord knew him before he even knew the Lord. Remember when, when, um, uh, when uh, when uh, Samuel, the Lord was calling Samuel and he didn't know it was the Lord. See, there was a time that Samuel didn't know the voice of the Lord. That should encourage all of you who are operating in the seer anointing. There was a time when, when Samuel knew nothing and he had to be raised up. He had to be trained by Eli, just like you're being trained right now. You're, God's going to do great things with your ministry. Listen, Samuel's prophetic ministry was marked by uncanny accuracy. I mean, it was astounding how accurate Samuel was. A lot of people today want to brag about how accurate they are. They want to tell you every prediction they made and show you news articles. They're very intentional about that. Um, I find that troublesome because you shouldn't have to work so hard to prove you're right. Samuel didn't. Samuel didn't. Samuel didn't. But in first, listen, in first Samuel three, verse 19, The Bible says that the Lord would not let any of his words fall to the ground. That's a big deal. Really, really think about that. None, the Lord himself would not let any of his words fall to the ground. Think about that. That means he was always right. Samuel never missed it. I'm not saying he, in his own decision-making, you know, he was grieving over Saul. God said, how long will you mourn for Saul? Let it go. But when it came to the prophetic, Samuel who was called a seer before he was called a prophet, none of his words fell to the ground. Now, let me just say this. Samuel had an accurate word because he had accurate ears and accurate eyes. The reason why his words didn't fall to the ground wasn't because God said, oops, Samuel said that, gosh, that was bad. It was wrong, but we're going to make it happen anyway. That wasn't the spirit of it. His words didn't fall to the ground. He had an accurate word in his mouth because he had accurate ears and accurate eyes. You, you, You need to take some time and meditate on that.